California, stay away from here. Stay away from here now. Don't, don't, don't come in here. Whatever you hear, stay away. John Doe has the upper hand. What's in the box? Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Perry Gorgeous Cousins. How you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, welcome to another edition of What's in the Box. Man, don't look in the box. What's in the box? But as always, before we get to, in this case, the package, let me talk to you. Okay, as always, had some new subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Um... What these videos are, I'll tell you, what these videos are is obviously I order a lot of stuff, most of the time it's paracord related, sometimes the items I show aren't specifically paracord related, but I do a package, a box opening on camera, show you what I've got, talk about why I bought them, what I'm going to use them for, that kind of thing. I also will show some of the things I've made since the last video, if I still have them, I don't always have them. Uh, a lot of stuff I make and it gets mailed out, shipped out to customers and things like that. But if I have them, I'll show them. Um, also, I do a lot of color comparisons. And the reason I, I'll explain this. I've explained this in the past and I'll explain it and I'll explain it again. For anybody who's new, I'll explain this. I've said this, and this is not a bad thing. This is just a fact. It's an observational fact. When you go to a Paracord Supply Company's webpage and you look at a picture of the cord to see the color, that may or may not be a true representation of what the color is going to look like when you get it in your hand and you physically look at it. A lot of factors come into this type of camera, angle of the camera. Um, lighting, all these kind of things, right? So, sometimes what a camera shows the color looking like is not actually what it is. It's just fact, right? Okay. Now, with that said, when I get in new colors, in, you know, or, you know, refills of old colors, I will usually, on camera, under the same camera and the same lighting, show you that color compared to other colors that are similar, that would be in the analogous area of the color wheel. That way, you know, if you have one of these colors, you can compare what you know it looks like compared to the colors that you may not have and or thinking of buying. And I'll tell you, if it looks green on camera, but in real life, it's actually more of a blue. I'll tell you all that information, right? So that's where a lot of that is. But I don't, I don't have a big package. There's not much in it. I don't really have anything prepared. I normally don't. I just turn the camera on and start talking. Um, but with that said, that's what these videos are about. Just kind of me talking and sh sharing what's going on in my little corner of the Paracord world. Okay, now with that, shameless plug. Stitched Anaconda. Here, let's bring the light over. Stitched Anaconda. I've, I've done this one. Um, I've mentioned this, showed this one a few times. A lot of people asked about it because there is no video tutorial that I know of except the one I made. So, description, or in the cards and the description below. This is on a brown safe light buckle, brown, um, fox orange, rust, and it's been stitched in golden rod. Like kind of a fall theme. And I did this one also, right here. This is a stitched, modified, sanctified covenant. Right? Same buckle. No brown in this one, but it's rust, fox orange, and stitched in goldenrod. And also in a fall theme. Considering, according to the Gregorian calendar, tomorrow, the 23rd, will be the first day of fall or autumn. So, bam, that's, there you go. And I've got a tutorial filmed for this one. It should be up on the channel. Um, if it is, I'll put the dis link in the cards in the description. Um, but I'm filming, I filmed it earlier, and I'm filming this now. So which one goes up first, we'll, we'll see. But if you're not subscribed, subscribe. Click the bell icon, that way you get notified, and you'll see how I do this one. Okay, now, with that said, let's see. What else have I done this week? Um... Uh, 
done this. Let's see. I've done quite a few of these, right? So I'll show you the ones I've done. I, pro I posted these on my social medias. Um, if you want to follow my Instagram account, you're more than welcome to. Links in the description below. Paracords of Kindness, just like the channel. But here's another one. Stitched, Modified, Sanctified Covenant. This one is maroon, blackish gray, and stitched in charcoal gray. And I put this one on a maroon silicone buckle. Now, for those who don't know, it's not... The buckle itself is stainless steel, but it's coated in silicone as opposed to being painted. And it gives it a... You know, you can feel it and you tell it's silicone, but it's less reflective to the light. That's the, that's the aspect I like about it. Like these right here. This one... You see how it's very reflective? This is this one is painted. This one is that silicone. So it's not as reflective. Right? It's more tactical. That's the way I label these things. What they actually are. Silicone safe lock buckle, and this is just a metal safe lock buckle. That's the way they're labeled. Okay, let's see. I did another one right here, a black and gray thing. Right here. This is black, anthracite, and charcoal gray and it's on a black silicone buckle and this one takes a little patience it's not hard at all it's really not hard at all um but this thing looks really good you choose the right colors man this thing looks good okay there's that one and here's the one that everybody likes so much i think these colors i love these colors i put this one on a brush brass buckle in the attempt to bring out the gold stitching. Midnight blue, smoke gray, and gold micro cord stitching. Here, let me zoom in just a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Oh yeah, you can see it a lot better that way. All right? Okay, now, I made one more like this. Now, this one, uh, Let's see, let's actually, I'm, I'll get to it in a second. I'll show you these other ones first. I did a, I've done some key, keista doors in the past. Regular old one color, one cord keista doors, no problem. But I've used some of uh, what some refer to as dip die cord, meaning the cord will go about eight, nine, ten inches of one color and then it'll fade into another color. And eight or nine, ten inches and it'll fade into another color. And that, that type cord works so well when doing a conquistador because it allows you to use that one cord, but the bracelet slowly changes. And I've done it in neon rainbow, and pastel rainbow, and that pastel rainbow one, it looks awesome. You have to go check out my Instagram account. You scroll down through there, you'll see it. It looks great, 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 great. But I've done some conquistadors. Um, I've actually stitched the conquistador. I don't have one of those in my possession that I know of. But it's on there. It's on the Instagram account. But I've been wanting to do this one. Um, it's called a hardcore conquistador. It's a Cetus weave. Cetus 550. Many of you may know who he is. Um, I think, yeah, there's a few tutorials on YouTube that actually show you how to make it. And even though it looks like a conquistador, it, it's not woven the same way as a conquistador. But it has that, that same feel. And I'll show you some I made. Um, this one. These are some of my favorite colors right here. It's maroon and blackish gray. And I did this one on a black silicone buckle. And I did another one in a gray monochromatic thing. Black and what is that? Blackish gray. And it's also on a black silicone buckle. Right? Okay, there's those. Now, I, have, I mentioned this in one of my past videos. I mentioned it uh, here recently. That's what's in the package today, some, some bead type things. I am, I've got a few people that are collectors, and I just make them stuff. A lot of what you see me make is for them. Um, now I have customers. I make stuff for you know customers or whatever. But most of most of what I make is for these these collectors, and I know the colors they like. Hence why I use a lot of the same color themes over and over and over. Just do them on different weeks. But I got to talking to one of them. And I asked them about 
beads. I, I, he, he had expressed in the past that he didn't like beads on bracelets. I said, okay. I said, what about like keychains with beads? He said, yeah, 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 that'll work. And uh, so I said, I'm going to buy some beads. And I got to questioning him about what kind of bead themes and type things like that he likes. So, you know, I've been ordering this kind of stuff. And, you know, it comes in, you know, you order this stuff from China, it takes two, three, four weeks before you get it. And as I order it, it comes in and I make one of these videos. But I made one of these, and I used, first off, I used, I got a bead, and I knew the bead I thought would go very well with the shackle I ordered. It's, it's a Celtic-themed shackle, right? I don't do a lot of shackle work. For those who follow my channel, I don't do a lot of shackle work. Why? Those things look great, but they're not very practical to wear, meaning they're a pain in the butt to put on and off. You One hand, trying to thread that screw through there and line it all up and all that, it's just... You know, it's not the most practical thing. They look great. Works of art and all that kind of stuff. But I ordered some of these decorative Celtic style shackles to go with this bead. And I've showed you the bead in the past, I think. Um, but I'll show you now. This is what I made. Here's the, the shackle itself. And it's a nice shackle, don't get me wrong, but it it, it, it doesn't have... The adjuster has three holes, and the very last one is the same size as the other two. So most shackles here, I'll, I'll get one and I'll show you. I think I may have mentioned this in the last video. Not sure, can't remember. I can't remember what I talked about in the previous videos compared to one of these. So I'll show you this so you can see. Here's your normal like U shackle with the adjuster. The U-shape makes it the U-shackle, and then this piece here is the adjuster. And you can see how it's got three holes for sizing. You know, you make it, you don't have to be exact in the sizing, and you can adjust it tighter or looser fit. And then you have this one is where your cords go through. And you notice it's bigger, so you can fit more cords through there. So, basically, you're not stuck with a quote-unquote two-strand cord weave. <coughs> Now, I'm sure, I'm sure, and if somebody knows, please put the description below. Like I said, this is not my forte. This is not what I do. So I'm not aware of all the ways of setting up one of these things. But with that single hole, like this one right here, it's got three holes. Well, right there, you, you lose part of that sizing. Because one of them's got to have the cord running through it, but the, the hole, you can only fit one piece of 550 through there. Believe me, I tried getting two through there, and I was like, yeah, it's not going to work. Right? So you're kind of limited as to, to just a two-strand cord. Now, like I said, if you know of a way to do it where you can fit more than one cord or you can weave it some way, hey, I'm sure there's a way, and if I sat down and thought about it, I could have figured it out. But I, I, I got, hmm. But this side right here, you can get two through there. You could probably fit three. Wouldn't have been wouldn't be a comfortable fit. But I got two through that side, right? And I made one of these. I'm keeping my I'm keeping the bead covered up. That's the surprise. Stitch modified, sanctified, whatever, covered it. It's jade green. What is that? Silver gray and passion pink. That's that passion pink and the jade green are both new colors. The passion pink I think I got last week or the week before. I, I was itching to use it so I did. Well, I used this bead that I thought would go with the tilted shackle. It's a dragon. It's like a dragon head. White brass I guess is what it is. And it's on there pretty good. Now, the thing with this bead, this... He, Here's where I'm going with one of the things I'm going to show. This bead, if we look at it, I'll show you one. Where's it at? What did I do with it? I may have mentioned this. I may not have. I don't know. But it's got, you can see it, right? Okay, For the, this is a piece of 95, right? And it's just got two little snake knots. 
Well, this piece of metal right here, in fact, has two holes. Not one hole, but two holes, and those cords are threaded through those holes. So there's two holes up here, and there's two holes down here. And they're labeled as three millimeter. And I'm like, okay, no problem. I can probably fit a piece of 550 through it. If I just work it. Hmm. That was a tough fit. Here's the keychain. I think I may have showed this. It's got a decorative rope thimble. That's what that's called for those who don't know. This little piece here. A lot of times you see them and they don't have these little metal loops. The decorative loops. It's just the piece. But that's called a thimble. That's what that is. If you don't know, that's called a thimble. A rope thimble. But It's got a silver, vintage, white brass, whatever, rope thimble. And then that dragon head. And the simple snake knot on the end, and those are two, you can't see it very well, but that's two pieces of 550 going through each of those holes, right? Let me tell you, that was a struggle. And I even took, I, I mentioned this, yeah, I, I remember doing this. I took my rotary tool with a diamond bit on it that rings out the inside of like semi-precious and precious gemstone beads. You stick it in that hole and ream it out and it makes it bigger. Well, I took that to the inside of these holes and made them a little bigger. I still struggled trying to get those pieces through there. But I did, and I got it on there, and I made this keychain. That thing looks good. What is this? Emerald green and that passion pink on black, right? But I told myself, you're not putting 550 through there anymore. It's too, too difficult, right? So, bam. I did this one. This was the one I wanted to do. Right, and it's on there. But what I did is I just threaded some pieces of 95 through those holes, and it fits went right through, no problem. And I just went down through the bracelet and I back wove it. You can kind of see it where it goes through the bracelet. I back wove it up under on both sides because you got you know it goes through here and it comes out here. So you got those two pieces, and I back wove the two on this side up under this side of the bracelet and the two there on this side they go through and they back wave this way and I pulled it tight and cut and burned it and all that you can see it back here there's two of them right here and the other two are right down here but it's on there it's pretty it's secure it's not as it's not it's not completely tight but I mean it's a big old piece but the thing turned out really well and those colors look good together right but I've got this one, and I was just messing around with it, right? And I've ordered, I've ordered some, um, because I don't have any of this in my inventory. What is it? Four twenty-five, that Type Two paracord. It's three millimeter in diameter, as opposed to five fifty, which is four millimeters in diameter, right? So I'm thinking, hmm, maybe maybe some of these beads and some of these things I get that have smaller holes, like the holes in this right here, that's a three millimeter hole. But I was able, with a little little effort, I was able to get that piece of 554 millimeters through there. Not that hard. It, it can be done. But here, just because of the nature, you get it through one hole. And then you got to get it through this one. Yeah, that's not the easiest thing to do because you can't get in there to get to it and all that. Way. But I ordered some 425, some 3 millimeter black cord. Maybe, maybe that'll work because I've got to make uh, one of my collectors. I'm going to make him one like this. I may not do this weave, but I'm going to, you know, the rope thimble and the dragon bead on it. And I thought, hmm. I told him, I said, let me figure out exactly. I said, because I'm not putting it on. 550. I said, I'm not doing that again, man. I said, I'd charge you an arm and a leg just for the mm, the, the pain in the butt fee, if that makes any sense. So I said, let me get, let me work with it. I said, give me a week or so to figure out a different way to do it or whatever, and I'm going to see. Because I'm thinking, you can't use this thin cord to act as core strings on this four strand round braid. It's probably, I haven't tried it yet, but I know it's not gonna work. It's gonna be so small that that braid's not gonna do right. It's not gonna look right if you have that thin cord as the core. So I figured, eh, 425, it's only a millimeter. 
smaller than the cord I'm using here. I said, maybe it'll work, and it might be easier to get through there. I'll get it in hand, try it, mess around with it, and we'll see. But that thing looks great. That, and I have ordered some more of these. I only ordered, I ordered these three initially. And I got them, and I've used them, except for this one. I'm waiting. But I got some more. I got some brass ones coming, like yellow brass. And then I got some more of these silver ones coming also. So, you know, those are those are some nice beads. They're, they are nice. They really are nice. But the hole is so small. It can, can be a, a pain. Okay, so with that said, there's all that. Let me put this back over here on my desk. Okay. We'll get this stuff. Just get it out of the way. Sit it over here. Okay, I made this one. I ordered here. Let me put my this shackle back over here in my, my inventory so it doesn't get lost. Made this, ordered this. <laughs> I love this. I ordered, I ordered this. <laughs> I say this just because of the irony of it, right? This is not a downgrade. This is nothing like that. I'm not making fun of anybody. I just thought it was funny. I ordered these from Paracord EU, or Board Paracord. Uh, these spit pew pews, 40 cal spit pew pews, right? Along with those Celtic shackles. And I posted the picture in their Paracord own group or I think it's what it's called. And Sean, he was like, man, I can't wait to see what you do with those. Talking about the Celtic shackles. Well, I made that. Well, I made this. Right? This is the first one of these because I, I ordered a bunch of them. And uh, this is the first one I made. And I just did it on, you know, basic. I told I made it for the collector. And I said, because he, he's a knife collector too. I said, I did this with the intent of, instead of putting a thimble or any kind of thing, I said, you might be able to, use it as a knife lanyard. And, and we've talked about it. He said, if I can't use it as a knife lanyard or whatever, he said, I'll just use them as keychains. He said, I collect them. So, you know, what I'm like, I understand that. But I tell you, I said, I'm going to make this one as, you know, more along the lines of a knife lanyard. So hopefully you can feed it through and then double it over, you know, and hitch it on the knife. Well, I did it in a stitched snake knot, blackish gray and midnight blue. All right. And I posted it all over social media. And I mean, it's nothing great. It's nothing fancy. And then it wasn't like a day later, Sean on his YouTube channel, he made a tutorial on how to do it. <laughs> now, I'm not saying he did it because of this. That's not what I'm saying. I just thought it was funny. I made it and posted it, and then he makes a tutorial. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. But I'll say this. I'll say this. I just I hadn't watched the tutorial yet. I'm going to to see how he does it. Because his is slightly, his stitching is slightly different than what I've done. Because that stitching, it's kind of tricky. Even though I know how to do it, once I get started, it's tricky. But once you get going, you're like, okay, I see how it works. And it turns out great. I, I'll show you one I made where well, you can see it a little bit better. This one right here, I done it in black and silver gray, in kind of a Punisher theme. Right, you can see the stitching better on this one. And this is the same type rope thimble, but this one is slightly smaller than that one I showed you. See what I'm saying? It's just a little bit smaller. But I have since ordered. I think there might be some of these in this package behind me, but I've ordered some. If I'm reading all the description correct, they're the brass ones, but they're this size. And I've ordered some more of these silver ones because I really like these. Right? But yeah, I just thought it was funny that Sean made the tutorial. You know, I posted the thing or whatever. And I'm not saying it got a lot of likes or anything. It's it's not. It's just a. You know, you've, people have seen a thousand of these, no problem. But a uh, day or two later, he puts up the tutorial for this, on how to make that right there. Now, and it's not the same colors, but I just thought it was funny. I just thought it was funny. Props to you, Sean. You beat me to a tutorial. I had a lot of people ask me how I do that stitching. I'm like, there's one tutorial. Fraternity of Weavers has a tutorial, but he's got a, a white paracord bracelet, and he sh does the stitching in leather cord. So, you know, you watch it, and 
It's not the easiest thing to follow, but that's that's where I figured out how to do it. I saw what he did. I don't do it quite like him, but the basics are the same. That weavers of eternity. If I think about it, I'll put it in the uh, description below. But there's there's that. Let me put this one back in my, my thing. Okay, here's one that I'm 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 really proud of. This one turned out great. I got a, this is for my collector. I got to make myself one of these. It's got that silver, white brass, whatever they call it. They, got, they, they label it as vintage silver. Yeah, it's just white brass is what it is. Thimble. I just got the rapture or the DNA. And what is that? Charcoal gray and black. And then it's got a gargoyle bead. Those look like a gargoyle on top of a building. With a, you know, simple diamond knot ending. But that thing looks so good. But I've I got one more of these for myself, and I've ordered a couple of more so I can do some other things with them. I think I'm gonna make myself one like this, and then I may do one in a black and red thing. But there's that. That's that. Okay, that's all of that now. Look into the package. This video is not going to be long. Like I can see it. There's not much in here. I'm not even sure. Let me see. Um, if I'm looking at all this correct. Okay, I don't think those little small brass thimbles, I don't think they're in this. According to what I'm looking at, I don't think they're going to be in here. But let's open it up and see. We'll make this one be a short video. Yeah. One, two, three. That's, that's what I thought. There's three, three different things in here. Oh. Let's get some of this out of the way over here on my little side table. I'm gonna, give me a second. Let me bring my software back over in front of me so I can see what's being on camera. That's it. Okay, let's open this one. <coughs> I think this, I'm not sure, I think this, one of these things, I've, I've got one, and I just haven't used it, but I like it. Is this it? Yeah, that looks like it. I've, I've ordered one of these in the past, and it's still over there in my storage container. I have not used it yet. Why? Because... It's going to be for one of my customers, and I wanted to order another one. That way I could have one myself. I'm going to pull my trash can back over here. But all it is is a basic skull bead. And it's black brass. I can get it open. Black brass. I know you can't see this very well, but it's just a basic skull. It doesn't have the crazy teeth. It doesn't have the bullet head in its side. It ain't all grimaced. It's just a skull, right? No facial expression or whatever. The only thing about it is it does have some little detailed work on the the cranium part, I guess you would feel. The fontanelle bone. Mind is a little fontanelle high. Mind is fontanelle. Raising Arizona, if you've ever seen it. Um, but uh, yeah, I li I really like this one just because it's a basic one. It doesn't have the fangs and the grimmest face or nothing. It's just a skull. But 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 the hole's big enough that you can fit two pieces of five fifty through, and and it's got holes on the side. That one's there on purpose, and it's on both sides. It's like about a two millimeter hole, maybe. That's what it looks like. But it also has one. It doesn't look like a hole, but it is a hole. 
right there. That's a hole. It, that's not the part of his mandible. You know, that's what it's supposed to be like. If you, if you know anything about the human skull and anatomy, where the, the jawbone meets the edge of the skull, it's got a little hole there. That in reality, and that's what that is. But they've actually made it into a hole that you can thread cord through, right? So you've got like a, a two millimeter hole here and a two millimeter hole here. And that one right there is not really, it's a hole, but it's not meant to put anything through. I mean, I guess you could, but it's more angled like this as opposed to these, which are angled straight down. And the one right there. Does that make sense? And that's, it's, that's what I like about it. it. It gives you options of how you can use it. You can thread it this way. You can thread it this way, right? What, what's the saying? I need that like I need another hole in my head, right? <laughs> but yeah, that's all that is, just a basic little bit. But I got, I've got one over there. I just haven't used it for my collector. Me and him talk on a regular basis, and I show him things. And I'm like, what about this? You like this? You know, order this? Yes, order that. No, nah, I don't like that. Order that one. Order that. And I order the stuff, and I'll eventually get around to making him something with it. But this one I have yet to use, the one I have, because I wanted to get me one. So I'll probably make one with something this week with one of these for him. I know I'm gonna do, if I if I get that thinner cord, which should come in maybe Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, I'll use that Dragon Bee. But that's that, all right? Let me just sit this here so it doesn't get lost. I'm going to sit it right here, and I'll put it in a storage container after I finish the video. Okay, let's see. Let's open this one. I think, I think, I don't know for sure. Yeah. Yeah, these came these came in a it was a two pack. You order them and it's a lot, you know. L O T. Not a lot, but a lot. As in you order it and you get two of them. You get a lot. That's what they call it. Like sometimes you'll see you 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 order it and you'll get five pieces. That's a five piece lot. That's, that's the way I'm using that term. I can get it open. And these are just like little basic, supposed to look like, like a wooden shield type thing. They had, I want to say they had the yellow brass or whatever, and then had these, and I think they had the copper red looking brass. But I was like, you know what, I'm going to just get these because I'm not sure. These are not exactly... I've never used these. That's, that's where I'm going. I've never used a bead like this before. Right? And how I've seen some people use some of these medallion type beads. Where, you know, it looks like like a hockey puck, if you will. <laughs> right? This is an oversized. This is a bead. This is a tape measure. I ordered these a while back. Got one of them sitting on my desk. But, um, it looks like this, and it'll have one or two, and it's a solid piece of metal for the most part. It'll have one big hole or two smaller holes for 550 to go through, and then the edge will kind of have a, a, a groove cut in it. So, you know, your two core strands will go here, and you weave, and those two weaving strands will kind of fit in that little groove on either side, and that's what holds it in place on your bracelet, right? And I've never used one of those. And I've got a friend of mine who, that's what he specializes in, those things. And he does some awesome work. Um, but I've asked him about one of those things and how you do it. He said, you just kind of got to improvise when you do it. I said, is there a tutorial where it shows somebody using one so I can see how they... He says, nah, he says, you can figure it out. He said, once you get one in hand, you'll figure it out. I'm like, okay. And now these aren't the exact same. These are smaller than his and all that. 
But I thought, yeah, I'll order these just because they kind of look cool. And I thought, if nothing else, because it, it's not flat on one side. You see what I'm saying? Looks like a shield on both sides. So that's probably, and that, that is a hard piece of, that center of that shield, that is a hard piece of metal. So you most likely, you're not probably not going to want to put that on a bracelet. But I may, I may just upsize the bracelet a little bit, and we'll see. But if nothing else, I can try to use it maybe as a keychain or something. I, I can do something with it. I can do a, um, like a four-string cord trilobite in a keychain between two D-rings, and I can put that as a centerpiece on it. Make sense? That's, that's my idea, anyway. But there's two of them. I figured I'd order them, play around with them, see what I can do with them, or whatever, and I may end up ordering some more. So, there's that. Now, this over here, we're going to see. I ordered this next thing. Bef give me a second. Let me find the bracelet, and I'm going to show you. I should have, if I would have thought about this, let me see, where is this thing at? Yeah, here it is, right here. I thought I probably showed this on camera before. I'm sure I have. I may have showed it recently. Don't know. But this, I've been wanting to order some more of these. But last time I ordered them, I got like yeah, these look a little bit smaller. Maybe we're gonna find out. Yeah, they're pretty much the same thing. It looks like that might be a little bit smaller. Maybe not. I don't know. But I ordered some of these originally off of Amazon. And all it is is, how do you say it? Molon Lab? M-O-L-O-N-L-A-B-E. -E. Molon Lab. I guess I say it. Most of you will probably know what it means. You can pry that, gun, that pew pew out of my dead hand. That basically is what it comes down to. That, that kind of thing. Um, but I ordered some of these. Again, it's the... This is not black and gray. This is anthracite, smoke gray, and maroon. Just a basic trilobite, right? But it's a shank button is what it is. It's a button that doesn't have the holes in it. It's got the piece sticking off the back with a hole in it. And this one is designed or made for paracord because that sh the hole going through the shank is large. It's not a little tiny thing like a lot of them, right? So, but that thing looks really well. But I ordered these off of Amazon, and I don't remember. It was like two, three. There was a couple of them, and they, and they came together. And they were kind of expensive, if you ask me, right? But that's Amazon. So I, I, I come across these ones on. The Chinese Amazon, and it was a deal. You ordered; they were they were relatively cheap, but it came with a little Spartan helmet with the two holes on either side. Which I wasn't really. That's not so much what I wanted. I would use them, but I was ordering it for this. For that same shield looking piece. And you can see, that's, that's called the shank. That piece that sticks up. No, we're not in prison. Nobody's going to get shivved and shanked and stabbed with a t melted, sharpened toothbrush handle. No, it's a shank. That's what that's called. It's a shank button. But most of the time, if you go to like a fabric store, I've never found any in a fabric store. Believe me, I look. That have a big hole. But this hole is big enough to fit two pieces of 550 paracord. And it works perfectly on a trilobite. I'm sure it'll work perfectly in other ways, but that's just the one I've done it on. So, you know. But it's the same type thing. Uh oh, it, look, it looks like it might be a little bit smaller, though. Not much, even if it is. doesn't look like it's much smaller. I 
Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just an optical illusion here. I don't know, let's see, let's see. Maybe this, it does, it just looks, maybe it's just the way I'm looking at it. Maybe it's the camera angle and the lighting. <laughs> okay, let's see, let's, let's. Okay, this one right here. About 17, yeah, about 17 and a half milli, milligrams, millimeters that way. And if it's a circle, it should be about the same. Yeah, it's about the same. Maybe a little bit smaller that way. No. Yeah, it's about the same. About 17 and a half millimeter, millimeters. Okay, let's try one of these. I don't know, could you see that? Yeah, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, not much though. It's about a millimeter smaller. I knew it was smaller, but that's no big deal. I mean, for the price I paid, they're a lot cheaper than these ones I got. I forget how many came in this. I want to say there was... I may, It may just have been one, but I know I ordered like two or three of them. Because I've still got some... I think, hang on, let me see. That I've never used. Yeah, here it is. I, okay, I got one more of those that I ordered off of Amazon. It was in one of my storage cases over there. I got this one and one more I ordered. So it came, I guess it came two in a pack. And I ordered them. And they were kind of expensive. Now these, you ordered, you got the helmet and the shield. Kind of a twofer deal. And they were not as they didn't cost as much as that. So I ordered, I don't know, I, ended, I think I ended up getting seven of them. Like I said, I wasn't really getting them for this piece, the, sh the helmet part. I was getting them for the shield. So, yep, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, that's right. I got seven, seven of each. But like I said, it was shield and the helmet combo deal. I ordered seven of them. And that was... I was worth it. Those things right there, they fit. And plus, to be honest, that little smaller bit, if you look at this one, maybe you can see it. You can see it on this side. Where the stitching goes down, it kind of bows out just a little bit going around. I put that first piece, that light gray, that smoke gray, it's going up under the edge of the shield. But that other piece of micro stitching, it kind of bows out right there. To accommodate that edge of that shield, right? Which is no big deal. I mean, it doesn't look bad. I'm just, psh, that's what it did. Well, maybe with these ones that are a little bit smaller, it'll run straight down and it'll look, it'll look more streamlined, I guess. But now that I have them, I'm going to make some of those. I'll put them on some different colors. Might try, might try to find something other than a trilobite. I know it works on a trilobite, 
some other weave. See, that's the thing when you work with beads um, on bracelets. You're always trying to find, depending on the bead and the orientation of the hole, right? Perfect example was the skull. You got you got going this way. You can put it on like a lanyard or a keychain. Going this way, you can put it on a bracelet or something. But that hole's not gonna be big enough unless you use some micro cord or some ninety five or something. But you see what I'm saying? Like that. The way those holes are orientated, sometimes you got to get creative to get it on that bracelet and do what you want it to do. Right? So it always it always comes down with, to the, the weave and the way the weave's put together. And can you strap it to the core strands and then weave around the bead? Or do you have to do the core strands and then... interweave the bead into the actual weaving strands not the core strands you see what I'm saying slight difference um and then you got to take into consideration which way the bead is going to sit in relation to the holes and the weave see what I'm saying like notice the hole is running this way so you have to orientate it on the bracelet this way now, if you want to turn it sideways and have that hole running this way, you can potentially weave the, cord, the, the the weaving strands through it. But it may not sit right because of the nature of the way this shank is. You see what I'm saying? That's what a lot of what I do is sitting around tinkering with stuff to get it to work, to see what works best. And that right there, that's the best, probably the best way to do that. On this type bracelet. So, but yeah, there you go. Let's put this back in this box. But uh, that's all I got, really. I mean, I didn't. It wasn't much. I've got more stuff coming, but that was a small order I put in, and. It was mostly to get this, to see what I can do with that, and to get some of these shields right here. So, but that's all I got. I, ooh, I'm not trying to zoom in. I'm trying to zoom out. I've got some stuff. Let's see. What else? I just had some of these silver, big silver thimbles on the way, and then some of the smaller brass ones. Before I realized they, they, they were two different sizes, I ordered some more of those brass ones. And they were pretty cheap. And they should be here maybe next week, I guess. But I ordered some more of these silver ones and some of the large silver ones and some of the large brass ones. But that'll probably be another month before I say them. I just ordered them. I ordered some more of those dragon beads and I found some stuff. I'm not sure how it's going to work. It's kind of, it's, it's this motif of a shield, but not a round one. It's like a shield shape. You know what I mean? And it's got a dragon on it. And it's got holes in the back. It's got two holes on the back that are running. And my, my idea is to be able to put it on one of these. Right? But that'll be, I don't know, two or three weeks before I get those. But once they get here, I'll do another video, and I'll show you when I make this stuff. I'll post it on my social media account. But that's all I got this week. Not, not much. Um, but, like I say, if there's anything, any colors you want me to put on camera and compare, I say this all the time, you know, a color you're thinking about getting, um, and you'd like to see me take that color and compare it with other colors similar because I may have that color. When I say color, I mean solid colors. I don't mean these multi-colored cords. I've got some of those, but um, I've got quite a few solid colored cords, and I may have one you want to see. If I do, I'll, t I'll get it and compare it with other 
similar colors on camera so you can see it. Um, if you got any suggestions on how to do these things or anything like that, share the link in the below. Anything, got suggestions on tutorials you want to see me do. Leave a comment below. All that good stuff. Like, share, you know, all that good stuff. But I'll end this one like I end them all. Keep it neat, keep it clean, and keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks.